は私はプリキュアじゃないよだけど仲間的な感じ In other words, she's one of us big friends. Welcome to the club. We just kind of waste no time this week with a fight right off the bat. Our heroes were fighting a fishing pole Romborg with some really good animation with emphasis on the speed lines, whilst Batamonda was making some very memeable faces. Wait, 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 let me guess. Kenueno, right? Yes, call it. You can especially tell it's Ueno when the faces look a little more stretched out, likely to accommodate for his animation. It's a good style that actually feels stylized as opposed to him. <clears throat> Anyway, amongst all this really nice Sakuga, Tsubasa managed to save some kid from some wayward debris. And after the fight, Batamonda started to channel even more of his inner Judai and took his frustrations out on the. <laughs> but yeah, even Ageha had to admit that she was technically this and. <laughs> oh, uh, sorry, that was kind of my trigger word. <laughs> Anyway, she decided to just focus on her own things, as she did manage to become a student teacher at a preschool. Ah, unpaid internship. This lady has truly entered into adulthood. Okay, but seriously, it was nice that she was taking the first steps towards her dream career that had been well established in her debut episode. And conveniently, she ended up in a classroom full of kids who were fans of her friends. This included the kid from earlier named Takir, who had become a fan of Tsubasa's. This excited Nagiha to the point that she almost ended up spilling the beans about them, but luckily managed to reel it back, enough to the point that she could play it off like she was just playing along with the kids in front of the other teachers. She then likely told the school that she was going to get some full replies from the precure after the kids gave her some fan mail to deliver to them, not mentioning that they were going to be 100% real replies from the precure. Gay! But yeah, it was kind of cute to see our protagonists interact with their fans, kind of like in real life, which, considering what's coming up, is going to be a bit of a theme of this episode. Anyway, Akiha also revealed that she was going to stay at Yo-Yo's during her internship, which would make a later scene feel rather pointless, but we'll get to that later. For now, I'm just confused as to why everyone's dancing all of a sudden. Oh, that's why. DAMN BOY! The next day, Akiha became one of the most relatable characters, to me at least. Yeah, legit, never underestimate a little brat's punch. It can be deadly. Eh... <sighs> Uh, phrasing? Though as it turned out, this was some very instant foreshadowing, as right after, Takuro actually did hit one of his classmates. Uh, really Toy? You, of all companies, are bringing this up? I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not one of those prudy parents who says kids shows shouldn't have any violence in them at all, especially a franchise like Precure. <clears throat> However, it is also important to teach kids what they should and shouldn't take away from these sorts of shows, in particular how they should approach conflicts with others as they can and will lash out like this sometimes. As someone who was a big fan of Power Rangers back in the day, I can attest that I was unfortunately there and did that too. Sadly, this scene would be the most they would bring up about this topic, but again, just the fact that Toei and its insistence of protecting their squeaky clean image even indirectly acknowledging this stuff is kind of impressive. Anyway, the brat of course ran away, though more importantly, someone really needs to call the police on these heroes spying on them in the bushes. <laughs> Sora, what did I tell you about watching Kakarembo before you go to bed? And soon enough, they were joined by an expert deviant with Batamonda launching his proper Monster of the Week fight. He utilized an elephant-shaped watering can as his catalyst, resulting in... <laughs> Dude, stop spraying your big elephant at the lady. You can't get upset me, she's legal. Anyway, after we got hopefully the last of this trio variant of their transformation that we'll see for a while, they had a pretty impressive initial fight, again thanks to Ueno's animation, which had also been directed by Yutaka Suchida, the series director of Tropical Rouge, which of course meant even more meme faces, seriously, what even is that? 
However, things quickly went south when they managed to find Elle and start blasting water at her, which you think Batamonda wouldn't want to do since he does need to take her back to his master, but rather cleverly, this all turned out to be a trap. And a good one at that, as he managed to lock them behind a power negating barrier. I mean, yeah, obviously this was all mostly just set up for the new debut in this episode, with our usual cast of heroes getting in peril, but still, credit where it's due, this dude has been a much more effective villain than his previous guy. Hell, just to add to his heal factor, he of course went for the easy target in Takeru. This forced Agiha into action, no not yet, as first she actually managed to take a page out of Sora's original notebook and managed to put up a good fight even before transforming. Hell, considering that she's not even a Skylandian like her, it was pretty damn impressive that she managed to trip up the Romborg while carrying a kid on her back the whole time. <laughs> Welcome to adulthood, Aga. Uh, gotta get that kid to lay off the popsicles. Anyway, after catching her bread, Aga of course went into the requisite hero speech that would earn her a pen, and compared to the other three, it was relatively Bob standard. Now don't get me wrong, it's still a decent speech about being the adult who lives up to those who admire her like Takiru, but compared to declarations about living up to heroic ideals, recognizing self-worth, or chivalry, it does feel a little mundane. Granted, I will give points to her assertiveness as she did manage to get her pen so quickly it actually took a minute for Elle to process her hero request, which was unintentionally pretty hilarious. Anyway, main event time as Akiha's transformation had some very flashy effects that were emphasized with some skip frames and- Yu Yoshiyama, Yu Yoshiyama, right? <coughs> Alright, just need one more for a bingo. Seriously, does this person have a thing for older redheads? Because that's pretty damn based. But yeah, an overall and really nice sequence as Yoshiyama does do bombastic transformations very well, as she knows when to put emphasis on big moments and her flash effects are just pure eye candy. Granted, the skip frames thing is a bit of an acquired taste, and even then, I don't think it always works out like this arm transformation just looks plain awkward. On that note, are those gloves melting into her skin? But yeah, as we already know, as she has been the opening this whole time, Butterfly does have a great design with a nice distribution of pinks of many different shades. The frills in her dress are very eye-catching, and they certainly took advantage of her age because that's a garter. Though again, at least she's of legal age. And just in case y'all want to say that I've been a creeper throughout all of this, well... They knew what they wanted to do with this character, so I ain't holding back either. But yeah, she had arguably one of the most fun debut fights, partially because, again, of that great animation, but I would say mostly because I don't see Braid Gear use items in their environment like this. I mean, wrapping the monster up in a diaper is both effective and demeaning at the same time, and after that Yu Yoshiyama finisher, they collected their second fill of this arc's MacGuffin, and thankfully it looks like we're almost halfway there. With that, the episode ended with Agha moving into Yo-Yo's house, which, yeah, feels just a little superfluous after that previous scene. I mean, sure, her internship ended, but you could have just said that she was going to stay after that last scene, but whatever. Yeah, this was a really solid Cure debut episode with some really good animation. I mean, yeah, I think my favorite debut overall is still Subasa's, but B-team member number two did have some decent moments in this one, especially before she actually became a Cure. Personality-wise, Akiha is one of the most entertaining characters, but she still does need some more juicier conflicts to really develop her, which I do think she'll be getting pretty soon. Interestingly, this episode wasn't written by Ryunosuke Kingetsu, you know, the head writer, but rather Kanichi Kato. Now, I do like this as it does mean that the secondary writers aren't being allowed to write some of the more tenfold episodes, but yeah, at the same time, it doesn't really feel like the head writer stuff. I mean, don't get me wrong, there was still some very solid stuff here, like that anti-violence commentary in the middle, and some of the comedy here was really good. However, I think some of the pacing here did feel just a little off, especially once it started to focus more on Takiru rather than more of Agya's personal conflicts, like trying to live up to being the adult of this group. All that said, I do think this is more just a symptom of needing to establish these character traits for Agiha, and once she's teamed up with an actually interesting character, then we'll get some more engaging stories. And let's be honest here, I think most viewers will remember this one as a Sakuga episode, as Ken 
Ken Ueno and Yu Yoshiyama did some great work, especially in the three fights in this one. Akiha herself remains a very enjoyable and amiable character with her straightforward assertiveness and pure badassery even without superpowers. Again, I think she just needs a good character arc and conflict to truly develop her into something great, which I do think she will be getting in the upcoming episodes. For now though, overall this was a very solid Cure debut episode with some amazing visuals and passable enough writing. There's a lot more to explore with the first adult cure of the franchise, and hopefully it's not just the fact that they can get away with a lot more low angles with her. And if you haven't seen it yet, we recently did a little review for Princess Precure Jojishi that's gonna have a little bit of its title keyed out here because it's in green. That aside, it is a really fun book that we just wanted to share with y'all just to have a good laugh over. However, with all of our planned side projects done for now, we'll get back to reviewing the next part of the Futai review. And until then though, Feral Finale friends, and if you excuse me, I gotta fill out the rest of this bingo card. Come on, Morita. Come on, Morita. Damn it!